by Brookside families and chaperones for our first grade field trip. On Friday, November 9th, we will be going to the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art, and you are coming with us. This video is going to explain what our expectations of you are going to be and what the students' learning goals will be, so that on Friday, you are ready to go. And we will be in small groups the whole time, so you won't necessarily have a teacher nearby to explain to you what um, we are doing. So you will get this whole big packet full of papers, so don't worry about it. And I'll also have a PDF version of it. So the point of this trip is that students have been practicing how to use a map. They will identify physical characteristics and they will describe human characteristics. So how culture influences art. To do that, they will use a map, the Nelson map, to find artwork from major cultures in the museum. They will then draw a picture of the artwork that they found and explain how it relates to our goals. So physical characteristics and human characteristics. And then there's also a scavenger hunt to really kind of slow them down and get you to help them think harder about the work. Museum rules, these are the Nelson rules. They are not my rules. They have to be followed because the docents will definitely call you out. Um, purses and backpacks have to be worn on one shoulder and in front of you. So it can't be on your back. If you have a crossbody bag, it has to be pulled to the front. Um, pencils only, no pens, no crayons, no markers, nothing. No food or drink, not even water. Keep it all outside. The art is very special to these docents. Um, no phone calls. Make sure that your phone is on silent or vibrate. And if you have to answer your phone, make sure that it is not inside of the galleries. I would, um, unless it's an emergency, um, don't answer phone calls on the field trip, basically. Um, and then be safe. So make sure that nobody is touching the artwork. There's no running, hopping, skipping, cartwheels, none of that weird stuff. And then Brookside rules, these are things that you agreed to whenever you signed the chaperone page. No alcohol or drugs. Even though the Nelson does sell wine, please do not buy any. And then do not use any tobacco products while we are on the field trip. So no vapes, nothing. Cell phones are for field trip use only. Cell phones may be only used for field trip purposes. That means contacting parents, taking pictures, maybe Googling so you can find more about the artwork. Do not spend your day on the phone, on Facebook, texting other people, whatever. This is a day to really be focused on the kids. And then again, in the same vein, supervise students. You are responsible for supervising your group of students at all times. So that includes student behavior and letting teachers know if a student is misbehaving. Um, this is the first time that we as first grade have been to the Nelson. They are doing us a big favor because of a scheduling conflict. By letting us be here, it will be a busy day. Please make sure that the students in your group are on the legitimately best behavior ever. So while you are at the Nelson, students, um, you will be going through and you will have this map. You have important parts of the Nelson that you have to see. I don't care what order you see it in. I just need you to see it. If you don't have time to see everything, that is OK. The important part of the lobby level is L9, which is the African art section. If you have time, you can do the photography, the contemporary section, cool. Avoid the museum store. The plaza level, the important parts would be this entire right side, the entire east side of the plaza level. So this European 1750 to 1950, European 1600 to 1800. If you have time, chill out, hang out with the sculpture hall, enjoy the Egyptian, Greek, and Roman area. I would avoid this kind of, actually I'd avoid the Greek and Roman too, but I would avoid this whole European 200 CE to 1500 because that is the kind of Catholic part. That's where all of the religious stuff is. And that doesn't really have anything to do with our goals today. So I would just avoid it. And then in the second level, you really want to focus on the South Asian, the American Indian, and the American sections with some of this China stuff that's also in there. Um, if you have time, enjoy Chinese and Japanese areas. And then I would avoid American 220. That's here. That's right here. It's the Thomas Hart Benton section um, because it has a lot of explicit nudity. I do know, yes, the museum has art that depicts nudity. Just kind of shuffle kids past it, hope nobody notices, tell them, hey, it's art, and kind of leave it at that. But I would try to avoid areas that have very large pictures of obvious nudity. 
So while you are going through the museum, students will have a page that looks like this. They will be drawing a picture of artwork from each of the major areas. And then there's two extras. And then they will write physical or human characteristics. So in the European section, they could draw a picture of Claude Monet's water lilies. And then they would list the physical characteristics that they can see. So they can see water lilies, a pond, probably some trees. I forget what it looks like. And then you'll go to the next section. It's not necessarily in the order that you will see it. So just kind of make sure that you check. The Chinese, South Asian, American Indian, and African sections have a lot of really cool artifacts not and artwork, but not necessarily artwork or artifacts that are um, depicting a lot of nature. So that's where the human characteristics part would go in. You would draw a picture of a, um, of a sculpture and then you would, or a mask, a traditional mask, and then you would write, well, that culture would probably use this for a ceremony of some sort, et cetera. And then there's two extra parts because Sometimes you just want to draw two American pictures because we got some pretty cool um, scenery going on. So then this page is the scavenger hunt. This scavenger hunt is just kind of to make sure you are going through the whole museum and not getting stuck in one spot or going too fast. Each of these pictures is from a different area. And then you as the adult have this next couple of pages to help describe the pictures. So you'll find this picture, which is Paul Cezanne's Mont Saint Victoria. And then you would describe, hey, well, he drew, he painted 25 pictures of it, etc. And then there's a question to ask. Um, why do you think he painted so many pictures of the same place? And then the kids could answer. There's no right or wrong answers for any of these questions. It has the location. So it's on the plaza level, European 1750 to 1950, and then P27. So if you go back to the map, P27 happens to be right here. So I try to make it as easy as possible for you. Um, if you think, oh, I think we missed it or I don't know where it is. Um, but I would not specifically go looking for these things. I would be excited when I find them. I've got three pages of that. And then this last page is questions to ask about the art. So while you are going through the art museum, these kids are going to run through it very fast, most likely. This gives you reasons to kind of pause and to look at art. Any art that you think is interesting or that the kids think is interesting, ask some of these questions. Ask questions that you make up in your own brain um, just to make them think more critically about the artwork and what um, the whole purpose of art is. I mean, it's just to enjoy and to make you feel things. So that is our field trip. Hopefully you are excited and all of that. If you have any questions or concerns or suddenly think you don't want to do this anymore, let me know. Um, I know I talked really fast, but it's because I had a lot of information to get out. So have a great night and please have fun.